Hello friends, welcome to episode two. I'm so excited to have Ying Wan La here today. So I'm just gonna wait for a request from her. But just to let you know how it goes down, we've got your questions here in this bag. And then I'm gonna ask Ying Wan La the questions that you asked me. And Ying has just sent me a request. Oh. <laughs> So just so you know, y'all, Ying Wan La is so incredible. She um, used to be a Rolls Royce engineer. She's a Young Woman Engineer of the Year 2019, and she's here from Malaysia. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> How are you? Very good, thanks. I'm so excited. Me too. What time is it over there? It's like 7. It's all right. 7 a.m.? At night. PM. <laughs> okay, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's 11 a.m. here on a Saturday. And I, yeah, which, which is, I guess, kind of, I don't know, what time do you usually wake up on a Saturday? I woke up at 11 this morning, so uh, don't ask. <laughs> no, I'm glad we're on the same page. I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, so Ying, I've got people's questions in this bag, mystery <laughs> questions. But first, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody who's watching now? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name's Ying Wan Lo. Um, I'm an engineer. I'm a chartered engineer. Uh, lived in the UK for 10 years. Now sort of go, going around the world, I guess, trying to do that in the pandemic. Please come back. <laughs> One day, sure, for sure. Yes, and you are Forbes 30 under 30. Yes, absolutely. Yes, How I got that. How incredible is that? It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's one of those things that you don't expect, but when it comes, it's like, whoa. <laughs> You're so cool. You're so cool. And you were Young Woman Engineer of the Year last year too, right? Yes, 2019. So I remember seeing was... you at the IoT Savoy place and you were wearing this like super cool blazer. And I was like, who, who is this person? Like, she looks so badass. <laughs> Listen, wear, wear a blazer if you want to look badass. Oh my God, thank you for my advice. I'm wearing, I'm wearing kind of a shirt today. So I usually wear this shirt around and Look. people think it's a Christmas jumper, but I'm, I don't know. I don't think it's a Christmas jumper, but it's, it's December it's, now, so. It's got like a little bit of a Christmas tone, so. Do you think? Oh, it's red and green-ish. I mean, it's not really Santa Claus, but yeah. <laughs> All right, shall we go through some questions in this bag? Let's start. All right, let's do it. Da, 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 da. Okay, first question. Oh, first question is from the E5 podcast. They are asking, who would win a fight, an, electric, an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer? Cheeky question, and that's just the, <laughs> only the first one, right? Okay, I guess whoever's asked that question knows that you are an electronics and electrical engineer, and I am... A mechanical, a mechanical engineer. engineer. But also they're biased because I know what kind of engineering podcast E5 group is. I know, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> well, it's not even E, so I think I kind of know. There's, there's a <laughs> um, Well, let me see. Right, right, kids, don't get in the fight, right? But we can definitely play this out theoretically, right? My answer is I think a mechanical engineer will win. And that does... <laughs> And that's because in the fight, it's about force and speed. And if anyone's uh, uh, thinking about any formulas, I'll say it's, it's power is equal to uh, energy divided by time. So I think in this case, um, a mechanical engineer would win. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and, you know, like uh, for E5 podcast, um, do you know what is the name of this series? <laughs> Oh Are my god! <laughs> Why did you ask this question? <laughs> but you look ready, you look ready. Uh, also, I guess it depends on if we're allowed to use robots or not, if we're allowed to use oh, electronics. Robot. I know. Robot. I really love your answer. <laughs> Let me turn you off a bit because I can't hear you very well. But there we go. Okay, so you think a mechanical engineer will win? Of course, like, do you want to, uh, do you want to try? Like, what, 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 what would you think? <laughs> I'm going to wait and see who's going to win in real life. Hello, Kadira, <laughs> nice to see you. All right, let's go on to the second question. Are you ready? Yeah. Ooh, okay, this one. Ah, this one is from Zara Show, pronouns they, them. And they're asking, I was wondering if it would be possible to get your advice on entering the, work, the workforce as an engineer, especially being non-binary 
I think we can definitely share this question, can't we? Mm. So I, I'll I'll try to do the how you know entering the engineering workforce right now, um, especially in in the COVID world, and maybe you can you can also answer the other part of the question. I think um, at the moment entering the workforce, everything's remote, so um, it's gonna be weird. You, it's hard to start that connection with with your colleagues, um, and you have to be a lot more proactive. Mm. From you know, from a non-binary perspective, I think um, I would just say from what I you know what I try to do is always be a good ally, and I always try to educate myself. And I think certainly the awareness is there to to get people to to be more supportive of this environment, even you know whether it's remote or or in person. Um, yeah, I think I think that's my take. It's it's challenging. We have to be more proactive, but there's also awareness building out, and we have to, you know, there's a lot more work to do. What, what have do you, you ever think? been around any um, spaces within engineering that catered for non-binary people? I think my last workplace there were um, gender neutral toilets, which is right. awesome. Um, yeah, I think a, a lot of people wear like pins and things like that to to signal that we are an ally. So you know, feel yeah. free to reach out, um, and also pronouns in emails. And also your yeah. profile always helps. And also but how to address such a, like simple thing to do that like is so powerful. Just putting your pronouns in your email, even if you are cisgender. Um, so I identify as like gender confused. I'm like non-binary woman. I don't know. Um, but I know that I don't have this. You know, when somebody looks at me, they don't instantly go like, oh, this person is non-binary. So I've not had any. Um, explicit discrimination because of that and I've not had that lived experience as probably Dara would but I know that as I guess a minority you go into workspaces with two mindsets I guess you could go in to try and change the world and it's a lot of mental energy but it's really rewarding or you can find someone that that's already there and built kind of with that in mind and they're both valid there are lots of really cool startups in Bristol that are super on it and like you know just millennial <laughs> and really understand what's going on and there are other places that are more established but are really open to change too and being more inclusive and there's big push for diversity right now so yeah I completely agree with you thanks cool. should we go on more boop, boop, yeah. boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Hi, E5 group have joined the chat. I'm not sure if you heard the answer to your question. <laughs> E5, you're late. <laughs> Go back check out them um, when you post it on the IGTV. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take them. Let's take them. Okay, cool. So this one is from Denise Ivy, who is one of the final finalists for Young Woman Engineer of the Year Award this year. Have you met them all? I have seen, I've been on the webinar. It's amazing to see everyone. Oh my god, everybody is so cool. It is lit, y'all. It's lit. So she um, works on submarines, which is just incredible. Yeah. Um, so Denise is asking, what has been most significant lesson you learned throughout your journey? Hmm. There are many, but I'll pick one. I think um, I'll, I'll pick the one on imposter syndrome because I've been through it myself and a yeah. lot of my mentees asking me about it right so it's it's one that I really um want to address so usually I'm quite a confident person um <laughs> I, I'm me? usually confident but me <laughs> oh yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah but that you know that sort of nagging thought it's it's still in my head right it's it's yeah. there and what I learned is how to not let not let it hold you back you know just it's going to be there, and I'm sure it ha it, it comes in. You know, a lot of people have it as well, but just don't let that thought hold you back. Um, yeah. and ignore it, and actually look at the situation and see how can I maximize this and make the most impact out of out of this. And I think the lesson I learned is is you know be fearless, and it's a skill you can learn. I think um, like on imposter syndrome, that's such a big one for me as well. Um, and the thing is, because I thought you were talking about me, like looking confident that people look at me and they're like, oh, Shrek, you're super confident. And I guess I, I, I am. And I definitely come across as that. But there's been, you know, not just bad days. There's been bad weeks, bad, bad months, bad years where I just thought, oh, my God, maybe maybe I am an awful engineer. And then kind of 
getting up and learning from it and being like oh wait no other people have made exactly the same mistake at exactly the same place in life as me and it doesn't you know making mistakes is normal um and learning from them helps you grow and uh, yeah but it's something that I'm still struggling with really if I'm honest and I think because people don't talk about it so openly I just didn't realize how common it was like I thought the people I look up to over there do not have it but they do <laughs> everyone has it I think the thing it's the good thing about sharing you realize well everyone has the same thing but you know we just ca- you, you, they try to carry on and it, it in some ways that really helped me have that perspective and 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 manage manage it when it comes absolutely hello Denise Denise has joined the chat as well she sent us some hearts thank you Denise thank you for your question it was lovely uh let's see this one shall we that's like that's like the show's song now (laughs) okay this one is from Lara Lalemi and she says I was wondering if you have the time to chat about being a science communicator and how to best engage an audience and secure repeat clients loving the episodes by the way thanks Lara (laughs) (laughs) um we can share this question can't we sure um I'll, I'll go first i think okay i mean i'm not a perfect science communicator i don't think i am but like i um... you're an amazing science communicator what are you on about <laughs> well, nobody's ever perfect but we all continue to keep learning don't we um Bad. and i think what i learned over the years is is know your audience and know what yeah. you're good at with your audience how do you relate to them and I think my favorite group is, is the bunch of students between 16 to 18 when they're thinking of doing A-levels or what to do in university. And what I tend to do is I, I would usually go in and ask them to imagine the world in 20 years' time. And it's not going to be the status quo. It's not going to be the world that we see today, right? We want something pretty radical. And then I'll tell them, well, imagine something really, really radical. And then they start, you know, talking and start giving the input. And they say, well, you are the person going to deliver that. You are going to be designing that. Mm-hmm. And that is your world, right? And, and then all, in the end, you sort of leave them really empowered, really excited, and then you ask them to go and do engineering. <laughs> <laughs> go now, go and do the thing. Good luck. <laughs> I, yes. I, I, yes. No, yes, totally. I think... That's my thing. What about you? I think for me, um, I don't know if you've had a similar thing, but I felt um, like... So for me, I thought that engineering is only corporate and like I had to use this kind of corporate... A grown-up language <laughs> and like dress in a certain way I used to straighten my hair I used to straighten my hair every day I used to spend hours straightening my hair because I wanted to look like everybody else I I thought that's what professional hair had to look like you know um and I think for me you know obviously that side of it exists too and if it works for you go for it if that's if that's the kind of thing you want to do go for it if that's the kind of world you want to succeed in go for it no problems with that at all but it wasn't working out for me and honestly as soon as I embraced my authentic self and was like yo hello I am Shruklata this is how I talk this is how I dress I'm super colorful this is my hair and you know I'm gonna use millennial language that's when people started responding to me and people want to see that more I think in engineering they're both valid but that works for me and there's just so many different ways out there there's no like one right answer I think that's my answer yeah agree totally agree cool more (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like throwing questions at you this morning well this evening for you and you know whenever you want to open a new question like comes or springs out and (laughs) That would be so cool. Hello, please send us some sprinkles and boxes with questions. All right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I think that theme song keeps on changing. Okay. Have you felt pressured to change your accent or who you are to succeed in engineering? I guess that kind of relates to the previous answer of it, doesn't it? That is well, it's a really, really good question, right? Mm. I mean, let's, let's address the accent bit first. I have a very confused accent. Um, I, I don't think I have a lot of control over my accent. It kind of has its lives on its own and it just, you know, do whatever it wants. Um, English is not my first language. So mm. I came to Scotland um, at the age of 19 and spent three years there. So I think that influenced the way I speak a little bit. I don't know. 
um, and and then seven years in in England, and and now I'm here. So it's I think consciously or subconsciously, it it is there. I don't I don't explicitly change the accent just to so that you know just so I can fit in or whatever. Um, but yes, that's that's my answer. Mm. Whether I've changed myself in some other ways just to not be successful, but like to fit in. Um, unfortunately, be very frank. Yes, I've done yeah. that when I when I first started out. I tried to fit in. I tried to join in a banter and lower my pitch of my voice just so that I can fit in the gang. You know, that's that. Mm-hmm. To, to be honest, I mean, yes, that happened. And was that the right thing to do? I mean, no, I don't think so because that's not my authentic self. Um, and having been through that, that's why I'm so passionate about diversity and inclusion. And that's why I'm so passionate about people being able to be themselves rather than mm-hmm. trying to change themselves to fit in a certain environment. Mm-hmm. And I hope, you know, we, both of us, like what we're trying to say in, in with this platform is trying to make sure that everyone's in, 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 included in the workplace, not just, not just be there as a token, but that you genuinely don't need to change yourself Absolutely, um, yeah. to fit in. Yeah. So that's my, that's my answer. I know for me, this is a really difficult question to answer if I'm being completely honest because yes, oh my God, I remember like as a child trying to to sound as British as I possibly can and like being upset if I had a bit of a twang or like something sounded a bit American or a bit Egyptian. I'm Egyptian, obviously, so things are going to sound a bit Egyptian. Um, And right now I'm such a, you know, advocate for like embrace your true authentic self and I I love accents but honestly from being completely honest with myself even knowing what I know now have I come to this country now I think I would still try to put on a British accent because I've seen the difference in being treated as me with this kind of you know British twangy accent compared Mm -hmm. to my mum I've seen how people treat my mum even though they treat her as if she's stupid she's got a degree she's like lived like a really full life she's done some very intelligent things but she's Mm. treated as if she's stupid because she's got a thick accent and I'm given completely a different um treatment and obviously it's gonna take other people to change this perspective so yes we can all go and be like you know yes embrace your accents but until other people's perceptions change too it's kind of I don't know (laughs) yeah so yeah that was my honest answer I guess no, I agree. I agree. We shouldn't. Yeah. We should discriminate people based on their accent, whether they have a posh accent or a working class accent. That shouldn't determine, you know, the the, the person. Like you yeah. should listen to what they're saying, not how they're saying it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I really hope that this changes more. And I hope people, because people have, you know, all the best intentions, but our unconscious biases just play up on us all the time, and it's just hard. Um, we have run out of time, but I wonder if we should go for one more question because this is really fun. What do you think? Yeah. All right. Let's yeah. go for one last question. Yeah. All right. So, da, 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 da. <laughs> what does this question say? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> it's more, more of these questions. Do you think you would have had the same opportunities to excel in Malaysia? And I guess I can comment on that in Egypt too. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I like to think that my opportunities lie around the world, right? Yeah. I and mean, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to limit myself to geography. Um. That's the short answer. There you go. <laughs> I think for me, um, I don't think I would have had the same opportunities in Egypt because diff- I think countries in the West, um, okay, probably because of colonization and, and kind of not very kind history, but we're enjoying this wealth today and this kind of point on the map that other countries don't and it does make me feel guilty because even with my knowledge today and kind of my way of thinking I don't think I would have reached the same level in Egypt as I as I would here and actually leaving Egypt is such a a difficult thing we don't have traveling is not a thing for us you know people here in the UK they're like oh yeah we're gonna go traveling on holiday in Egypt that's not a thing (laughs) you know freedom of movement isn't equal around the world unfortunately so yeah, that is a shame, and I hope the world becomes a more equal place in the world. I'm, I feel like, you know, those um, those beauty pageants, like, I want world peace. <laughs> That's what I want. That's where we ended that, on a positive note, right? Let's hope that everywhere around the world, everyone has equal access <laughs> opportunities. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Ying Wan Lao. You are incredible and I love you. And like, despite you have all of these incredible awards, but you're such a down to earth person and super easy to speak to. Thank you for coming. And I'll speak to you in a little bit. Just me yeah. and you later. Okay. Yes. Talk soon. Nice. Then. Lovely to speak to you. Bye bye. <laughs>